Abandoned Places Scotland, the Victorian Insane Asylum. After a grueling and long trek down the mental hospital's old, overgrown train line with Discover with Pajerico, the large Victorian brick building heaved into view. It was clear we had our work cut out for us on this exploration. All 64 acres of it with cameras, security, fencing, and lots of anti-climbing paint. The mental asylum before you was constructed in 1874 as the major county mental institution serving its entire region. The original two-story brick edifice was designed by William Lambie Moffat. It expanded in 1898 with two wings and a dining and recreation hall built by Sir Robert Rowand Anderson to hold 500 patients. Patients were treated for all forms of mental illness. By this time, it was completely self-sustained and contained with five-foot iron fences, its own water supply, and a heating and power plant. The asylum had its own train station stop, which allowed easy and quick access to the huge campus. The patients were assigned work in the gardens to grow their own food and give them fresh air. By 1902, 70% worked these gardens or were tailors, shoemakers, bricklayers, smiths, or carpenters on site. The Brabazon scheme, created by Lady Brabazon, the Countess of Meath was actively employed where female patients were assigned laundry, knitting, or housework and given training in crafts. These crafts, which involved things such as knitting, embroidery, and lace making, were sold to sustain the asylum. Leisure activities then expanded over the decades to include picnics, later on dances and concerts, and by 1902 there were cricket and curling matches, and by the 1920s patients could play hockey, golf, tennis, bowling, or board games. For every 10 patients, there was one staff member on site, and overcrowding was not a major factor. In the 1940s, the asylum was officially renamed to being a mental hospital and underwent further changes in the 1980s under the care in the community policy of deinstitutionalization. From here on, it slowly fell into disuse and decay until closing in 2010. Current plans are underway to convert the hospital to 400 apartments and to demolish 60% of the structures. Before they are gone, we are going to take you inside to explore some of these buildings that include the houses of the asylum doctors and the nurses' wards. The first section we're exploring, however, is a basement area where the facilities and groundkeepers would have had their offices. It's a sea of random bits and parts that have drifted down from the asylum above. Years of buildup of the pieces of the patient's lives and various tools. A cubbyhole labeled Balak makes me wonder who the space was for. The fungus here has grown out of control. The box is coated with a thick layer of white mold. The area is musty and you can smell the spores. The section is sealed off and self-contained from the main buildings.
A moldy painting seems to be of some age. A chalkboard, patient chairs, and a walker. An old stereo and behind it a lone patient's wheelchair. Having found the asylum main complex sealed, we head outside to the doctor's houses for some fresh air. The area resembles a post-apocalyptic neighborhood of emptily staring buildings. What might have first served as a carriage house is to the side of the home. Inside this window, the floor is rotted away. We head around to see if there's a back entrance. To this side are some attached garden sheds. Through the door, the first floor shows extreme decay. These houses would have been built likely in 1898 during the Victorian period expansions. The rooms here are quite grim and uninviting. We head into the second doctor's house. Mm -hmm. 
On the floor is a dead bird. The natural decay of this blue bedroom with plants growing in through the window seems like a perfect scene of collapse. This room is easily the brightest abandoned bathroom I've ever seen. We head across the lawn to the nurses wards which some local youths tipped us off on. The decor here is more like hospital rooms, despite being staff housing. While vandalized, these endless hallways of rooms seem to mostly just be decayed.
The long and almost identical hallways of peeling paint and wallpaper remind one of being in the story, the yellow wallpaper. I really have discovered something at last. Through watching so much at night, when it changes so, I have finally found out. The front pattern does move, and no wonder, the woman behind shakes it. Sometimes, I think, there are a great many women behind, and sometimes only one. And she crawls around fast, and her crawling shakes it all over. Then, in the very bright spots, she keeps still, and in the very shady spots, she just takes hold of the bars and shakes them hard, and she is all the time trying to climb through, but nobody could climb through that pattern. It strangles so. The exit is sealed. The electrical breaker box for the building is completely trashed. The door is locked, but the hole in the wall is just as good. Through the door is a long and dark hallway. and we're back in the curtain room from earlier. Or are we? It's hard to tell what direction is which from here. This small room seems to be some kind of storage. It's always good to watch what's underfoot. The wind howls outside.
One of the only pretty things here is nature slowly intruding on this window. The fireplace here is much nicer than the rest of the rooms, signifying an activities area or an entrance room near the front door. Back down the dark halls to the other end. The place is quite long. Oh. Okay. You have to squeeze through the direct doorway. <laughs> The Ruthless Billionaire's Virgin by Susan Stevens has three stars on goodreads.com and is available on Kindle for just $3.99. Jackal and Jay raves, this book had one of the top two WTF did I just read plots of any HP I've read. There was some serious Vaseline smeared on the lens through which you had to read this thing. So wildly improbable, I read with my mouth open. Super rushed, odd, no character development, the whole thing suffered from wonky time effects. Did it really take place in the course of a couple of hours? It seems like someone has been living here with clothing strewn all around. There are quite a few personal belongings.
On the floor is a Dracula cape. Romance novel reading vampires sometimes do become homeless, just like mortals. The mattress here is a horror show. A few cans lie to its side. We leave the ward in the asylum and join Pajerico in a grueling, miles-long hike back. It's reassuring to know the asylum will be renovated and used again in the near future. As for the buildings we have shown you today, they are slated for demolition and will soon be no more. For now, the asylum sits silent and alone, waiting for its next chapter to begin. Join us next time as we explore an abandoned castle and its story of the assassination of King James I of Scotland. Thank you for watching. For more unique abandoned places and their lost stories, follow us today by subscribing and hitting the bell icon. If you are subscribed, please take a moment to unsubscribe and resubscribe, as we understand many of you are not getting notifications for our videos. Until next time.